Um, can we bring them in here to get the treatment? Yes. Do we have such plans? Yes, we do. Um, how are we doing it? By, like I said, restructuring, restructuring the healthcare system and getting people to know that healthcare is not equal to hospitals. That is a system that we have the advantage of having over a thousand, almost 2,000 doctors in a door. Many of them are in federal institutions and private practice and state institutions. When we create a system where all of them can be put to use, they can, you know, it wouldn't really matter because everybody who goes to receive treatment has health insurance, can pay or has the ability to pay. And therefore, the, you know, we, it's clear that the healthcare system can be properly funded. That is what, those are all the things we're doing to make sure that Edo becomes a tourism hub, um, in addition to us having electricity to power our hospitals. Yes. Excellent. Thank you, sir. We'll go back to the Zoom hands that are up as well. I think, um, Uncle Sonny Rabo, you have some people whose hands you say have been up. You are unmuted, sir. Yeah, okay, yeah, thank you. Um, I have two names. Let me just quickly get the names. Uh, um, first one is uh, Uncle Greg Ogbefu. I think he has something to say, and especially it sounds more like an answer, but maybe it's also a question. Uncle Greg Ogbefu, sir. If you unmute him. Good evening, Unmuted. everybody. Um, I don't uh, have a question. I was uh, invited to make a comment on the proposed uh, port in a dosage, which His Excellency has as one of his legacy projects. Um, I want to thank the organizers. of this program because it's a very uh, apt platform for enlightening uh, people, particularly those who are not at home. Um, the port project has been uh, in the radar of past administrations for, for some time, but it has taken His Excellency Governor Basaki to actually take practical steps to bring it into realization. He started by setting up a technical committee, which I was privileged to be part of, to carry out a viability uh, study of building the Benegele port. We, we spent about seven, eight months doing our study and our work. Uh, in the end, some of the summaries was the fact that the port in the original Gelegele, as we all know historically, will not be commercially and even technically viable. So it became necessary to relocate the port nearer uh, the Benin River, about 49 nautical miles from the Atlantic Ocean. So that's what we're working on. In terms of accomplishments, the immediate past committee uh, that worked on the project has gotten to a point where they were able to identify the preferred transaction advice, uh, advisor. Uh, it's an international company with headquarters in uh, Canada and uh, in consortium with another company in Holland. So we are engaging them now in negotiations and finalization. So by the first week in January, it's expected that um, an agreement will be signed with the transaction advisors whose job is to work with us from inception to actual commissioning. And this is expected to take about 24 to 30 months. Uh, amongst the things they'll be doing with us is to obviously review all the legacy work that has been done by different people in the past, um, come up with an apt design of a port that meets the state's needs. You know, as it is now, uh, those things
state is landlocked. So the moment we're able to open up the states to the sea and global trade, then the fortunes of our economy definitely is gonna turn around. So we're working very hard to see how we can get this team off as early as possible in the new year. Now, amongst the things they're going to be doing will be to competitively uh, identify the engineering, uh, procurement and construction company that will carry out the actual construction. And that is going to be done through a competitive bid. Uh, and more importantly, the transaction advisor also have shown competence and capability and track record of being able to structure the funding as well as source the debt and equity to fund that project with the state contributing a minimal equity. So we are hopeful that with the pace at which we are going, we should be able to get this accomplished uh, in the course of the governor's second term. So Edo should remain very hopeful that the Benin City River Port is gonna be a reality in the course of the governor's term. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. As uh, Uncle Sonny Rabo, do you still have a name to call? I'm sure you do. If it's muted, can uh, can we unmute him, please? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, I hope this accident will not keep happening to Sonny Rabo. Um, I have Mr. Israel Wekbe, who is next. Please, you have your 90 seconds. Go ahead. Um, um, Your Excellency, I'm really very, very excited um, to be in this forum. Um, uh, my question is, um, yeah, goes like this. Um, the creative economy is substantially powered by young people, um, but critical to this sector is the need for capacity building mm -hmm. to enable the acquisition of skills and competences. Um, I reckon too that there's a correlation between the academia, education, and practical training. Now, might I ask what your administration's position is in this regard, taking into consideration really the seeming lack of clarity presently. Um, I say this with every sense of um, um, seriousness and responsibility, because when we talk about cultism and all of that, you know, young persons need to be engaged as it were. So um, in this area of creative economy, education, capacity building and, um, and skills and competencies, what's the administration's position in this regard? Thank you. Thank you very, very, very much for a very good question. Um, let me just make this general observation that as a government, we have come to the realization that the real issue with us is not the lack of ideas. There's nothing new that has not been said or discussed in the past. What is lacking? is the capacity to make, to execute whatever you've decided on, to just make it happen. And, and that's the standpoint from which we want to engage, to say, yes, what about this? How can it work? How can you make it happen? And we're saying in doing so, it has to be a mutual responsibility. It cannot be government alone. It's, you know, both the, you know, government is just a catalyst, will create the enabling environment to make it happen, the thinking, and perhaps the, 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 the initial done work. That's, that's our role. In the area of the creative, in, of the creatives, it's one area we know has, first, is innate, it's just natural to us. It's natural to Edo people are very, very innovative and creative people. So for us as government, how do we support? It's to create the enabling environment for people to be able to do what they, you know, what they, they know how to do best, but in a creative space. What do you need? You need, like you say, capacity building. So we work, we're working with the, the, the German government, the GIZ, who just gave, I think, about in excess of uh, half a million dollars, and we had to match it with our own funds. And the old the observer uh, premises, as we speak, I just connected it to Osiomo Power. Um, and we, just like we have in the production hub, we are creating, we're, 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 we're building an, you know, a, a hub for the innovatives. 
So you have 24 seven electricity, you have spaces where people can come in with their uh, finishing equipments, you know, to finish music, whether it's the films, whatever it is, you know, uh, uh, that, that, that premises is being made ready as we speak. I went to inspect it about two weeks ago, and I hope that before the end of the first quarter next year, you will have studios, you will have um, cameras, you will have mixers, you have all the things that you need to finish. And they'll, hopefully classes will be run and um, you know, things will, um, and um, instructions will be given and training will be given to people who are already in that industry or aspiring to be. Um, I like the idea of a business Zoom meeting. And I think it's something, Lamte, we should put together so that, you know, yes, beyond these sort of general meetings, we want to sit and I say, look, I, these are the opportunities I'm looking for investment in. In this area is very, very specific. In the healthcare area, and we want to partner with people to build new mortuaries. I want to do this. This is the cash flow we expect. You know, I want to be able to do specific, you know, transactional meetings via Zoom. And I hope we can organize this maybe quarterly. Somebody asked about the plans for children. I think for us as a government, it's all about, the, you know, about them, the next generation. And that's why we're investing so much in education. I mean, the biggest gifts you can give to a child, the greatest gift is education, very good quality education. And we're investing in our school systems. I want to use this opportunity to thank the chairman of SUBEB, one of you, um, John of Yahweh, the amount of work that they're doing for these children is just um, unbelievable. God will continue to reward you. So the person who has been asking me to talk about the plans, it's about them, it's about their healthcare, it's about health, it's about their you know, training, it's about their protection. Um, uh, uh, so that's, that's you know. um, a lot of people have put questions about roads. You know, um, what I want to tell you is that I went through all the 192 wards in Edo State. So there is no community, there's no local government, no community in a ward. I do not know what the road, road request is. I have them. It's a pile. So we will not be able to deal with all of them, but the important thing is to plan for them. Deal with the ones you can deal with now and have a plan for those you are not able to cover. Uh, so, so, so what we've done is we, we're, we've just fi finished the process of hiring a team, an international team, to come and help us with our regional and urban plan. That is what I am concluding now. And that is another legacy we must leave for Edo. We will not be able to build all the roads. However, we should be able to tell you when your road will be built, given the resources we, we have, we, we expect to earn, and you know, uh, uh, the priorities that we have as a state. So I've, you know, I've heard all of you. Um, I've seen all your requests. Um, and um, I want to tell you they are in, but we're putting them in a planning process. We're going to put the plan, design them, and then see how we can fund them. Um, but realistically, we will not be able to fund all our roads in a four-year time frame. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Thank you so much. Um, I've got two persons here, uh, Sele Okogo and uh, Roland Omorodion. They have questions. Please, can we unmute them? Sally Okogo should go first. Sally or Kelly? Can we unmute them if they're in the house? Then can we unmute Roland or Morodion, please? If Mr. Okogo is not there. Roland or Morodion, I'm trying to unmute. I can find both. Well, I think he's probably left the house. And uh, Kelly. He's okay, exactly, we have, uh, and Kelly as well. Okay, well, can, can we go to the next now. ones? Long okay, time please. Uh, can we find uh, Alexander Ediowe, uh, please? Mm -hmm. Alexander Ediowe and Gladys Alexander Williams. Alexander Ediowe. them, please. Okay, Alexander Ediowe uh, can unmute himself. I think I've just asked him to unmute. He can go ahead. Alex, please try to unmute yourself. Speak.
In terms of strategizing uh, how we can customize or tailor average and average business revitalization initiative that we have for a do and in a do state which we also intend to use as template to uh, use in other parts of, of Nigeria. I will go in detail with this, I mean, in this area, later on if we are able to connect. Also, to let you know that we are already present. In I will have to interject here, sir. Uh, with all due respect, I think uh, the points you've made they are very salient points. And uh, I want to assure you that uh, we will follow. up with you. And uh, you heard the excellence, uh, His Excellency said earlier that you will look forward to a time where we shall hold uh, a business. Zoom meeting. I'm sure the points you are raising right now will be very relevant at that point. And uh, because of what we are doing right now, which we need to fulfill, as it were, I will uh, want to move to the next uh, person to ask his question. Uh, is our question. Of course, I equally have here Gladys William. Please, can we unmute Gladys, Gladys William? And then uh, uh, we'll follow up speak. on, uh, you know, uh, Alexander Dionwe. Gladys, you can speak. You can unmute yourself, Gladys. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's be reminded that you have just 90 seconds. Sure. Good evening, everyone. I will say I'm very pleased to be among everyone of you here. And um, thank you, USLC, for having me here and for having you here, too. USLC, I don't have much to say. I just want to say thank you for your applause knowledge letter that you send to every one of us and those who have received and those who are yet not to receive, we all say thank you. We were overwhelmed to receive such letter from you. It make us feel blessed. It make us, to, it make us um, have more, more confidence, have more courage to support you more and more and more. And uh, I want to also say thank you for the ongoing project in the state and the one on Jet to do. May God Almighty continue to lead you and strengthen you in good health and wisdom. That is all I have to say, your SLS. And congratulations once a day. We day here for you, no shaking. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Vosso. 
so much. I want to quickly uh, call on uh, Dr. Loretta Agboko to quickly um, call the next uh, group of names to ask their questions, please. Dr. Loretta. We have with who his hands has been up. Festus, look by we. Festus, can he be unmuted, please? Festus, you can unmute yourself. Pastor so bear with please. Unlucky Asen of Guan, please get ready. Your hand has been up. Excellency. Uh, Pastor, you are unmuted. Can you please go on? Yes, I'm. Um, Why lucky Asen Ogwan gets ready? Good evening, Your Excellency. Uh, I want to use this opportunity once again to congratulate you for your re-election. Uh, my name is uh, Festus Ubewi. I am the convener of Togba Movement in Germany. Uh, actually, most of my questions has been answered already by you. And uh, that name that was given to you, Wake and See Governor, is actually playing out. Thank you very much. Uh, we do expect a lot from you. Uh, and we are believing as well that you will deliver. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Festus. Um, Asen Ogwan, are we ready with you? Yeah, yes, I'm ready. Yes, ready. Good, good, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Lucky Asenogwan. I congratulate you, my NCLC governor. Uh, my question today is that uh, you have already raised the point that uh, old things are passed away. I would like to ask those markets that was bonds, if you award it, are they going to put a provision of fire service? Like even, even though it's not a vehicle, as in they have to put the fire extinguisher on the market and on, on the police station too, are those provisions is going to be made for the re re rebuild of the of the of the the bond market and the bond police station? That is my question. Excellent. And we have thank you very much, sir. We have Joseph Ogieho. Can he please take his question in ninety seconds, please? Okay. Good evening, everybody. Uh, good evening. Uh, His Excellency. Governor Norega Opaseki, thank you for finding time to come to us this evening. I'll go straight to my question. Uh, I was a security officer and I live here in London and I want to come in in terms of the security uh, situation in Edo State. Just as you have rightly said, you as a governor cannot do everything and you need the help of us in diaspora. So I want to come in in terms of security because the way I see the security in those state is not working the way it should be. If you will permit me to share my expertise with you or to help build the security apparatus in those state, I think I will, be very, I will be, be very happy and I will be glad to join you this is my license, so to prove to you that I'm a security officer. So it's being renewed every year, but I stopped renewing it because I'm not using it. So if you want me to come, or if you want, to, want me to share my expertise with you, because the way, I, mean, I come home every year, twice a year, but I stopped coming because the security is not working. So I really, if you want it to work, and I'm willing to support you, and I'm willing to, help you to make it work. So, Thank those you, in, sir. so those in diaspora can be happy to come home. Thank you, sir. I think at those all across the world are just like you wanting to key in. So before His Excellency takes this, I'll just add on two charts. One is a very practical one. Um, at those dynasty worldwide, they are saying they sent a representative to this um, college of, um, so the co technical college yesterday and that they were told that the places people get to do their practicals, it's outside of the technical college. 
So I don't they are still worldwide wants to know why this is happening. And they are also asking what is happening at Egualo. There's supposed to be a technical college there because they believe that upgrading the technical schools is the key to a better and vibrant economy. Then someone is saying, sir, that in order for the government to save money, he saw you at the school of nothing and he saw you wanting to revamp the place, which is a very good idea. But he's saying that once you revamp the place and you build the hostels, can you please charge the students a fair amount, if not too much, but something so that at least the government can make some money back to put into some other things still within the nursing school. And this is Nosa Obano from the US. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. And thank you for all the great questions you've asked. Um, I don't want to keep you much longer, so I'll just attempt to answer all the questions uh, as briefly as I can. I want to start by ex once again extending my profound appreciation to all of you who've come out to support our administration. Many of you on your own cost flew in to attend the inauguration ceremony ceremonies, we really do appreciate and thank you immensely. Uh, we had to keep the ceremonies low key because of what is going on of, you know, with security and COVID-19. Um, so, you know, so we apologize that we couldn't have the kind of big splash that people thought was uh, required. Uh, but nonetheless, I want to, you know, put it on record that all of you, I mean, all of you without exception, um, just we're, were just um, unbelievable in terms of your response, your prayers, your good wishes, the goodwill. Just that's the energy, that's the oxygen we need to keep us going. And we will, we will, with God on our side, continue to do our best uh, for our people. Um, we, so uh, let me just talk about teachers. Uh, I'm, I'm going to do a mix between the questions asked and you know the ones I'm seeing in the chat room. Teachers, yes, we are currently hiring teachers. Um, but when we, we call it the uh, a fellowship, the teacher fellowship. So we're hiring teachers uh, which, who will train for three years before absorbing them into the adjusted civil service. And what we're doing is we're hiring them in their locations because we noticed that um, we, we've been having problems with posting teachers. You find some areas where you have excess teachers and many areas you have you know, you don't have enough. So what we've done is we've gone through the, you know, the, 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 the uh, we've gone through to see where the distribution of teachers and we down started this project where we will be hiring up to 3000 teachers, but we will be hiring them in their communities and not, yeah, and in particularly where there is shortage. Uh, we're battling, you know, to make sure that people do the right things. Yes, you don't have a job, you're in Benin, you want to teach because you're from a particular community. I'm not going to employ you in Benin, except you're in that community. And the community leaders endorse and tell us that you really live there. We will not employ you, uh, you know, as a teacher. Uh, so we're employing teachers and uh, the process is on. And hopefully by the beginning of February, you know, we'll announce and we'll begin to uh, pay them. And for agriculture, we have done a lot in agri. So I thank uh, the young man who talked about his, um, you know, his intent interests. For, interestingly, we have some some Americans. I mean, uh, that's, uh, people who are in the diaspora who live, uh, you know, just once in this, who are currently farming and partnering with us in the agricultural uh, projects we're currently undertaking in, in a do. I have at least five of them, and they come in and out, and some of them are doing well. Uh, and so we just encourage you to join. We, we don't want to talk anymore about these things. We just want to do it. You know, if you're ready to come and take the risks, get on a plane, come here, we'll show you the opportunities. And we'll, our role is to try and reduce the risk for you. Our government is not a farmer and cannot be a good farmer. So we're not even going to, but we'll create an enabling, enabling environment for you to farm. Um, yes, we are looking at crops. The you know, crops will have a competitive advantage in like oil palm, cassava, rice. By the way, most of the rice we are consuming this Christmas in Edo State, I mean, this is with government to buy, we're all grown in Edo this season. Um, so I'm happy to tell you that we have Edo rice. We would have had more, but for the flooding around, uh, uh, flooding of some of the farms. But we're going back to encourage people to grow rice this uh, dry season. 
Um, you talked about um, uh, the technical schools uh, and the placement of students in technical schools. In fact, we, we, you know, we're, we're going through an exercise now where we are trying to geolocate not everybody who's, I mean, everybody who has a technical business. The children need to be apprenticed. You can't do everything theoretical in class. So that's why we look, if you are, you know, you are into um, welding, for instance, fabrication, after you've taken do, uh, we're building capacity to respond. Um, lastly, um, someone talked about um, expertise um, and water in Eastern land. Well, we, for water, I'm just too happy to announce to you that the water works to Niboha has started working Reticulation to Urumi is, you know, ongoing. The meters are being uh, given out, and water uh, has started flowing in the taps in some areas. We will continue to expand. The biggest issue we have with water is electricity, you know, because if you have to use diesel generators to pump at those port stations, then the costs of delivering the water will be very high. Um, so we're looking at uh, alternative options to try and reduce the cost of um, pumping water from the pumping stations. Um, I am sure that I have attempted to answer as many questions as possible. If I haven't answered, um, I, it's, you know, well, because I mean, it's not humanly possible to do answer every, uh, all of them. But I think the key message is to leave behind that first. As a government, we just want to do. I have less than four years left to complete my term. So we, I don't have the patience and time to be debating and discussing options. The time we have is how to execute the, on the options we have already decided on. We will not be able to do everything we have, but what we will do, we will leave a plan to the people because they got in there by the contributions or support of a few people does not mean they'll go in there and work for just a small clique of people. Every, I mean, look at the number of people who voted for me to become government.
I mean, we should, for me, we, this is, we sold the idea that we're going to work for our people. We did, we're not going to work for individuals. So I've had the bashing from family, from friends that I haven't helped, but it's, it's part of it. Look at, I mean, the oath I swore to, my oath didn't say I must take care of my friends and my family first before taking care of the people of Edo State. By taking care of the people of Edo State, my family and friends will benefit. And that's what it should be. And I want to thank you very much for your continued support. And to, I just assure you that the goodwill, the good wishes, the prayers from you is the oxygen that just keeps us going. And just please don't relent. Keep praying for us. Keep advising us. You know, keep supporting us. And by the grace of God, we will make a do. much. Thank you, Excellency. Before you go, I think Uncle Sonny wants to bring someone in to also thank you from the angle of your people. So Uncle Sonny, are you there, please? Yes. Please, can we unmute him, please? Yes, he's unmuted. Uncle Sonny, please. Your Excellency, sir, uh, allow me to invite Ambassador Becky Waifu all the way from Tanzania, who will give the vote of thanks. He's been watching and listening carefully. Father wife, please. Good evening, Your Excellency. My name is Ambassador Matthew Biki Waifo from Tanzania. I want to, first of all, very wholeheartedly thank you your Excellency, for this kind of community engagement with all people of Edo State and friends of Edo State, including those that didn't vote for you. The fact that you have taken time to address everybody from the low, the good, the bad, and the ugly, this trait in you is what make all of us say that you are the governor of all of us. We are all in this uh, first series of that the court cases are warranted storms in teacups initiated to cause, to cause distractions to positive governors 
and the type of rebirth which a those state require right now and has never had before. So let us all not fall into the trap of losing the mega vision. Yeah.